Hello, 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 everyone. We are blessed to be on the land of the living. We are here with in the sanctuary tonight. Yes, we know how to be outside, but we are here in the sanctuary. And we are about to start prayer. We're about to start prayer now. Come on, Sister Night and Jones. I got Amy Lee, who is co-host. We're going to start with prayer, Father God. We thank you for another day, God. We thank you for an opportunity to study your word, God. We don't take it lightly or for granted, God, that we have a mind to study your word because somebody don't have a mind on tonight, God. We thank you as we come together to study your word, God, that you will be in our midst, God. You will lead us and guide us in your truth, God. Open up our understanding. Give us the thoughts to have, Lord. Anything that's not like you, Lord, take it out of us, Lord. Lord, we want to be refined, Lord. Burn up anything that's not like you, God. And God, refine us, God. We want to be more like you. And as we study your word, Lord, let your word get into our hearts, God. Let your word be in our day. I'm sorry, you all. I was on mute. So I start prayer over again. Father God, we come to you humble as we know how, God. First, thanking you for another day, God. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to study your word, God. Thank you for a man to study your word, God. Somebody tonight don't have a man, God. And so we say thank you, God. God, as we come and study your word, be in our midst, God. Give us the thoughts to have, God. Give us understanding of your word and the knowledge of your word. Lord, let your word be in our hearts, God. Let us live out your word daily, God. We invite you into our life, God. Touch us on today, God. Lead and guide and order our steps, God. Lord, let your word be in us, God. Anything that's not like you, God, take it out, God. Lord, burn it up on tonight, God, and let us live more like you. We want to be more like you, God. We want to be a light to a dying world. God, give us the mind, God, to spread your gospel, God. And we're going to forever give you the praises and the glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We apologize for <clears throat> running behind a little bit. So tonight we're going to... <clears throat> We're studying section seven of the lesson, and the title is Praying. The title is Praying, and it says, Believers impact the lives of other believers through prayer. Let me say that again. Believers impact the lives of other believers through prayer. So not only should we just be praying for ourselves, but we should be praying for others, and we impact their lives and we encourage them through prayer. And the um, lesson tonight comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 13 through 17 and then chapter 3 verse um, 1 through 5. And it reads, and, and, and before I read it, I'm going to go read this, um, <clears throat> the introduction. The introduction say, the day started off with alarm not going off, no coffee to be found, and only enough cereal to cover the bottom of the bowl. It went downhill from there. In the middle of this rotten day, a simple text message from a friend changed it all. It read, God brought you to my mind. You were prayed for today that God would see you through. Praying for another person changes our perspective and theirs. Paul focused on prayer and the impact it makes in this world. So here on tonight, <clears throat> we're going to see two things in the lesson. We're going to see Paul first praying for the Thessalonian church, and then he's requesting the church to pray for him. So we're going to see 
um, both sides of that on tonight. So the question that I'm posing in from the lesson is say, how does knowing someone is praying for you change your perspective? And anybody on Zoom want to unmute and answer that question or have a conversation with us? How does knowing someone is praying for you change your perspective? And in, in definitely what um, the commentator said, it encourages you, it lifts you up. So when you're going through having a bad day, when somebody, just knowing somebody's there praying for you or going through the struggle with you or got you on their mind, that gives you more strength. And God definitely worked through prayers. Anybody want to give any comments on the uh, introduction? <clears throat> so we're going to look at section one. And uh, we're going to start off. And like I said earlier, we're talking about Paul's prayer. And then you're going to hear Paul's request for prayer. And um, in this lesson tonight, again, the title is Pray. The title is Praying, and um, Paul turned his focus to prayer. And so here we're going to see um, Paul ongoing love and his ongoing prayers for the Thessalonians. And he's going to ask God to encourage them and to help them grow stronger in their faith. So Paul also asked the Thessalonians to pray for him in his ministry. So we're going to see both sides of Paul's prayer. We're going to see Paul asking, I mean, praying for the church, and then Paul will ask the church to pray for him. So the first section is called Be Steadfast. Be Steadfast. And this is going to be 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 13 through 15. And it reads, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Because God have from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the attaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tra traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. So here... Paul began this section by expressing his thankfulness for the Thessalonian believers. And he let them know, he said, he give thanks always. So we know here he's being consistent in giving God thanks and praise for the Thessalonian church. And he also um, demonstrated to the congregation that they needed to know that they were beloved of the Lord. They were loved by the Lord. And, and it feel good to know that we are loved by God. And we know we are because uh, Paul also expressed gratitude for their salvation. And we understand that salvation is a gift. This is just God, a result of God's gracious choice to make salvation possible. And it's a gift that we have to accept. Um, <clears throat> he's not going to force it on us, but it's nothing that we can do for salvation, nothing that we can earn on our own. So we know it is a gift. And Paul also go on to say that, and God had saved them and they were being sanctified of the spirit through their belief of the truth. So here he also reminds them that they were chosen from the beginning. He said, um, in verse 14, he said, where unto you, he called you by our gospel. And here, when he's saying our gospel, he means through them, uh, through Paul and his compassion that uh, he's preaching and spreading the gospel to the obtaining of, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let me go back to verse 13. That's where I was going. He said, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification. And we can see that in um, Ephesians 1 and 4. And I'm going to go and read Ephesians 1 and 4. And it says, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So here, Paul let them know that God has chosen you and he has given you the gift or of salvation. 
And in verse 15, Paul transitioned from gratitude to command. So here he asked in the church, he, his first command to the church was to stand fast and hold the traditions. So here he's um, telling them to stand fast, hold a tradition because of the uh, persecutions and false teaching that they will face. And so he encouraged them. And today we must be the same. We must do the same today. But how, how do we stand fast and hold on to the truth? Can anybody help me out and have a conversation with me? How do we do that today? What does that look like today? And I think about is being Pride, um, Pride Month, and then I think about all the women that were protesting um, for women right to have the ability or have the right to have abortions, and because they said it's their body, um, we have to we have to stand fast and we have to hold on to the truth when it comes to the things that are against the Word of God. And those are just some things that just popped out of to my head because those are some things that's taking place on today and we see it in this world on today. But what are some other ways that we can stand fast and hold on to the truth? How is that um, can be shown today in today's world as Christians of today? Anybody want to unmute and discuss? Could they unmute? Can you repeat your question? I was asking uh, in verse um, 15, he said, therefore, brother, stand fast and hold the traditions which we have been taught. And I was asking, how can we today hold fast? I mean, yeah, stand fast and hold on to the truth. And we know when he was talking to the Thessalonian church, he was telling them this because of the person persecutions that they were going through and false teachings. And I was asking um, the um, class, how can we do that today? How, how do we uh, hold fast to the truth on today and stand fast um, on today? You know, I thought about you talking about, you, I thought about they were going through, they were definitely going through persecutions. But today we're going through, even though we do have brothers and sisters who are going through physical persecution, you know, in different parts of the world, we are actually going through a silent persecution. And what I mean by that is we are, the, anytime they hear us speak out against sin, they try to silence us. They don't want us to speak out against uh, gay marriage. They don't want us to speak out against abortion. They don't want us to speak out against sin because anytime you do that, the first thing they say is you're judging me. And really, they don't fully understand what those scriptures mean when it talks about judging them. The Bible says that the saints are going to judge the world. Now, I, I definitely don't, and, and it's talking about a future time, and I definitely don't think that we should stand in judgment of anybody today. But when we're talking about sin, those things that God has clearly labeled sin in the Bible, that's not judging people. Sin is sin according to what the Bible says. So it's like the church is going through a silent persecution in that they are trying to shut us up. They don't want us to, to talk about those things that are, are, are sinful, but we, we cannot afford to be silent. We must, we must continue to talk about sin. We must continue to preach against sin and we must continue this fight to get the gospel to the world. Amen. And um, I was mentioned earlier, I was thinking about this being, uh, they celebrate Pride Month and they talk about um, women rights and women were protesting to be able to do what they want to do with their bodies and, um, and abortion should be legal. And, and I know today, in special in the, um, the people that are famous, if anybody say anything against gay people or gay rights, they call themselves counseling, they call it counsel that person, or they are trying to, you know, say their career is over because of what they are saying or what they believe, but we have to stand fast on the word of God. And if it's like Sister Rod said, if it's against sin, we're not judging, but we're standing for what is true. And that's what we have to do on today. Okay. Tonight, did you see where the women went into Joel Osteen's uh, church 
and uh, stripped. Oh, they nice. went in there and stripped because they said, my body, my choice. And even that phrase is against the word of God because the Bible lets us know that our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And so our body does not belong to us. Our body belongs to God, the creator. And so they, I guess they say, if, you know, we go to this church, we really gonna be doing something. But we must understand that every one of them, as well as every one of us will stand before the judgment seat of God to give an account of the deeds done in our bodies. It looks popular in America. It sounds like it's okay, but God's word is true. And every one of us will answer for the sins that we commit. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have a comment on uh, section one, the first section? Okay, we're going to move to the second section. It said, be encouraged. And this is 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. It says, to be encouraged. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God and even our Father, which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and works. So here we have in, in this uh, section is called uh, labeled to be encouraged. So here we have several things in this section of verses should uh, encourage us even on today. And the first thing we could be encouraged by that we have the privilege of prayer. We have the privilege of prayer. We don't have to go to the priest on today and ask the priest to pray for us. We can go to God for ourselves. And so that is something to be encouraged. And it says, um, we can also be encouraged that, um, to know that he loved us dearly. It says, even our father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. And we see the love uh, is evidenced in Christ's death on the cross for while we were yet sinners, he died on the cross for us. So. Um, we can be encouraged that we can go to him in prayer and we know that he love us because the Bible says we are the apple of his eye. In addition to love, our Lord Jesus Christ and God, even our father has given us everlasting consolation. So believers may not have all the answers, but they do not live with uncertainty about the future because we have comfort in Jesus Christ if we trust in him. In verse 17 said, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. So Paul prayed specifically for the hearts of the believers right here. He also prayed for God to establish their every good work and word. And um, so here we see that he prayed for their works and their words will be fueled by the encouragement and strength that they experience in Christ. And so, um, Instead of him praying that they did not go through all this per, uh, persecution, he prayed that God would encourage and strengthen them to be faithful in the midst of their circumstance. So sometimes when we pray, God don't change the circumstance. Sometimes he changes us in the circumstance. And we should be more proud of that because he's changing us spiritually and we're becoming closer to him when we go through certain circumstances okay any um comments on section two to be encouraged okay we're gonna go to be prayerful okay so now we're gonna see paul asking the church to pray for him so the first two sections we saw paul praying for the church so now he has a prayer request himself. So in, we're in Thessalonians chapter three. So now we're going to Thessalonians chapter three and it reads, finally, brother, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. So here he's turned around after he prayed for the church, he requests the church to pray. For, I mean, yeah, and requests the church to pray for him. So now we see uh, 
Paul asked in the church to pray for him. And the commentator said, Paul shared his prayer for the church. Now he asked the church to pray for him, Silas and Timothy. Paul asked the entire church to pray. Some may think that praying can only be done by a select few, by those who have superior spiritual knowledge. This is not the case. Prayer is something every child of God can and should do. So here we see that Paul is asking them to pray for him. And that's what we should be doing for our leaders also. We should be praying for our pastor and his uh, wife because we we on page uh, 113. So Paul's first prayer request focus on the word of the Lord will have free course. So here the phrase to have free course indicates running without hindrance and attaining new ground. So the first thing he's asking his prayer request is that we pray that the word of the Lord can be spread. So <clears throat> here we're sp uh, asking God to, uh, that's why we need to pray for our pastor because that's one of the ways that the word of God can be spread and, and he can spread the word to us and he can feed us and we can go to work and feed someone else. So we have to keep our pastor in our prayers. And so we know that um, it said the word of the Lord can be spread. So we know God works through his word to change lives. So the word, God word is powerful. So it is need to be spread. So he prayed that it would be spread. Um, and as we, and I thought about this, as we go through our daily life, our daily routines every day, we don't understand that there's a fierce struggle among invisible spirit raging somewhere. When we going through life and we going through our everyday routine, it's a spirit raging somewhere. So our main defense against these type of spirits are prayer and the word of God. And they go hand in hand. And, and I, I, I wrote something down. One pastor was saying, Dr. Tony Evans, he said that uh, prayer activates God's will. Our prayer must be tied to God's word. If you don't know God's word, you don't know how to pray. God's word must be the foundation of your prayer prayer or your request. Do you agree with that, Sister Ryan? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say if you don't know God's word, you don't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. Because that might encourage, discourage some people who may not, you know, may be babes in Christ. They don't Amen. fully know the word. So I, I wouldn't say if you don't know God's word, you don't know how to pray because sometimes we go through things and we, you know, we just, all we can say is help Lord. Help Lord. And so, um, so I wouldn't put it that that uh, boldly. But what I will say is this: knowing God's word does help to activate our faith. Knowing His word helps us to know His promises. And so, as children of God, we need to know His word so that we can know those things that we can claim. I say it like this. When you don't know God's word, it's like there are, it's like a person who has has an inheritance. Let's say somebody in your family died and they have left you all this money, but you're still living, you know, living the same life you've always lived. You're, you're living like a pauper because you don't know that your this person has left you this money. You don't, you don't even know. And so I say, I use that analogy to, to, to say that it's the same thing when uh, a person doesn't know God's word. You don't know those things that he has left for you, his dying, the, what, what he did for you. Uh, and so we have no excuse not to know his word now. We have uh, information at our fingertips and not all of that information is good. But when I'm, I know God's word and I'm studying God's word, then uh, I, I know a Mother Hart used to always say, uh, we need to rightly divide the word too. We know that the scripture says this in another place that you know coincides with this scripture. So yeah, we need to know God's word. And I think that that is what he was trying to emphasize. Yeah, okay. And so um, here, uh, I mean, like this title say, be prayerful. And he's asking the church to pray for him. But we have to understand the power of prayer. 
because uh, when spiritual things come against us and we go through our everyday life, we just see the physical. But anytime you go through a struggle and it's something physical, even thinking about the virus that we went through for two years, it was something spiritual behind it. So everything that you see that is visible and physical, I promise you, it's an invisible spiritual thing behind that. And so, and how do we fight the spiritual? And I wrote in my notes, uh, Ephesians 6, uh, verses 10 through 19, kind of also uh, explain that we're, we're dealing with uh, spirits. And how do we overcome those spirits or how do we prepare for those spirits or prepare for Satan's attack? We do that through prayer. And, um, and one thing we can do, we got to know there is a spiritual attack. First, you got to know that you have to know it's real. Then you pray for strength. You study God's word to recognize uh, the tactics of the devil or Satan. And then you remember scriptures that you can have at your fingertips. So when he, when the devil coming at you, you can throw those scriptures at him. So it's some scripture you just should try to memorize. And then you practice what God words say, because when you practice what God words say, you'll have an ear to know when he's speaking to you, or you have an ear to hear his will or God's way. You're not going to hear God if you're not close to God. So we, and when I mean close to God, I mean spiritually close to God. So we, and how do we get spiritually close to God? By studying his word and then practicing what his word say. Because it does us no good just to know the word if we're not trying to live the word. We have to live the word. We have to become one with the word. And that word has to live in us. So as you practice God's word, you have an ear to hear him. And, and one thing we, the problem with people today, and I notice some people that I encounter, they want to hear from God, but don't want to, they, they want to keep their distance from God. They want to, um, but you're not going to hear God if you're not spiritually close to God. And um, we, we got to understand that we want God blessing, but don't want to have a relationship with God. But you're not going to hear what God is saying to you if you don't have a relationship with him. That's just like in the physical. If I don't have a relationship with my husband, um, he ain't going to hear me and I'm not going to hear him. So somebody that I don't have a relationship with, I don't talk to. But when you have a relationship, you can hear what they're saying to you. And, and when you got a relationship and you love them, what they're saying to you means something to you. And so um, we got to have an ear to hear God's word. God's word is so important. And so you were about to say something, Sarah. I just thought about our relationship is important close to God. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk to him except you know, when, when he wants something. <laughs> to make their list. <laughs> they teach the children to uh to ask him what they for what they want on Christmas. Mm -hmm. and, and truth be told, our some of our relationship with God is just like that. We only talk to him, you know, when during certain seasons when we're going through something when uh, someone has died, when things get hard for us. That's the only time we talk to him. So we got a relationship with him, just like the children have with Santa Claus. We only talk to him when uh, when we need something. And so uh, God is under no obligation. He is under no obligation to do anything for the sinner until he repents. Amen. When you read the word of God, he is under no obligation to do anything for the sinner. Only promise he has for the sinner is salvation if he meets when he uh, repents. Exactly. But the sinner has no authority to claim any promise of God. You know, you got this, this, this name and claim it, speak it into the atmosphere. You can speak into the atmosphere from now till it gets to the moon. But if you don't have a relationship with God, you just out there talking. Exactly. And, and, and we see that a lot on today. I think about when Elijah and Ahab, and they were looking for rain. Elijah heard the storm, but Ahab said, I don't hear anything because Elijah had a relationship. He was, yeah. he was in, he was close to God. Ahab was not, so he wasn't gonna hear. And so we have to have a relationship with God and we can't, um, 
say we we go to church every Sunday and still don't have a relationship. Yeah, you know the house of God, but you don't know the God of the house. We have to know who the God of the house is. And that's just my prayer for myself. And you know, and I and that's my testimony. I thank God that you know I found Little of the Valley. I was going to a church and end up coming here and never for no reason just came here one Sunday because my kid Riley daughters used to pick up uh, my kids when they were little. And one Sunday I said, well, I'm gonna go to church with, with the kids and stuff and came then I went another Sunday and I went another Sunday and just never went back. And they said, well, why you wanna go back to the church? I don't know, it wasn't no reason. Um, it wasn't no falling out or anything, but I knew with my relationship with God and I look back at that, I first had to find the house of God. I had to go where I can learn and be taught and then I start to figure out who the God of the house is. And I start to have a relationship with him. And so I see my, I see that transition. I see my growth. And I just thank God for what, you know, on tonight. <laughs> I just thank God for that. So uh, we going to stay prayerful <laughs> like, um, Paul told the Thessalonians to pray. So I'm encouraging everybody on tonight. We're going to pray. Not We first going to pray for our pastor. And then I want you to pray for somebody. It can be somebody that did you wrong, but somebody going through a struggle. I want you to just put them on your mind. Pray for them. If you got their number, text them. Send them some encouraging word because like I asked earlier, you don't know when you know somebody's praying for you, what how that change your perspective of what you're going through. You know you're not alone. And so um, we're gonna move on to the um, last section. Um, it's a be confident. And this is 2 Thessalonians chapter three, verses three through five. It said, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And he, we, uh, and we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the uh, uh, love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. So here he reminds his reader that the Lord is faithful. Just because things not going our way does, doesn't mean that God is not faithful because a lot of time God let us go through things so he can build us up spiritually. And so we have to be grateful for that. And no, we can't depend on people. I like what the commentator say, say here. He said, God can be trusted when everyone else disappoints. So man is man. Man can let you down. You can call me and really need me and ran out of gas and I may be sleeping. My phone may be dead, but God is never sleep. So he never slumbers. You can always trust God. So here we see that Paul did not tell the church that the Lord will most likely be faithful or was faithful most of the time. Rather, he stated that the Lord is faithful. So we need to know whatever we're going through, he is faithful all the time. And then down in verse five, Paul concludes this prayer by asking the Father to direct the hearts of the church to the love of God and the patient waiting for Christ. And that's the only way people in the world, we can bring people to Christ when they can see the love of God in us. It is the love of God in us that's going to draw people to Christ. And so Paul didn't want the Thessalonians just talk about God's love. Rather, he wanted them to be overwhelmed by the love of God more and more each day and to live out that word to see. So the question here that I'm going to pose is say, what was, in, uh, what was the importance of Paul reminding the Thessalonians of God's faithfulness? Was this more for them or for him? Any comments? <laughs> you say, what was the importance of Paul reminding the Thessalonians of God's faithfulness? Was this more for them or for him? And I think it could have been both. 
Mm -hmm. It can be for both. He and Kurt, because they both were going through. So this could be to encourage both of them. It said, Christ is the ultimate example of endurance in that he's willing to endure our sins on the cross. So anything that we going through, we best believe Christ had been through it. Ain't nothing new on other sun. So how do we apply the text tonight? Um, how can we apply the text to our life? So here the commentator said we can express thankfulness to God for the salvation of others. We can be prayerful in a form of encouragement to others. And that's what I encourage you to do on tonight. Pray for somebody that you know is going through. Uh, believe Believers are wise to invite other believers to pray for and with them. And God is capable of helping believers honor and remain faithful to him. And so the, um, they have two questions I wanted to talk about. He said, Paul encouraged the church family doing their struggle through his prayers for them. Who is someone you know who is in the middle of a struggle that can, you can encourage this weekend? We just talked about it. So if it, it can be somebody you were friends with or somebody you're not friends with, somebody that done, done you wrong. Those people you know you should be praying for, praying for their hearts and praying that God would save them. And it say, in what areas do you think to express more confidence in God? Take time to ask him to help you and commit to trust him more fully. And then it says to record your prayers. And so tonight, that's another thing I want to encourage you or challenge you to do. In what areas do you need to express more confidence in God? Okay. Then take time to ask him to help you and commit to trust him more fully. Are there any other comments before we close the lesson? So this was a good lesson. The title again is praying. And um, we see Paul pray for the church and then he asked the church to pray for him. And so we're going to encourage you to continue to pray for your pastor. If your pastor is not lit or the valid pastor, whoever uh, your pastor is, continue to pray for your pastor and then take time to pray for someone that's struggling. Tonight, don't pray for yourself. I'm sure you, we pray for ourselves every day. Don't pray for your kids on tonight, even if they are going through something. Just take time to pray for somebody you know that is struggling and that you haven't prayed for, okay? Any other comments, Sister Joan, Sister Riley, Sister Amy? Okay. Every day, pray for something. You know, something like you say, somebody I have praying for. Somebody yeah. who may be struggling. I think that is an awesome. Okay. Okay, and you just do what Sister Gary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? Any other comments on Zoom or Facebook? Okay. Well, you all have a great night and um, we will see you. Uh, don't forget about the teen pregnancy workshop for everyone that signed up on Saturday at 11 o'clock. And we'll be in the sanctuary on Sunday morning for uh, Sunday school at nine o'clock and our morning worship at 1030. You all have a great night.